You thought baby rulers were gonna be safe? I always start each week with an ankle rocker jump test. Uh, this helps me to see readiness, see if my body's ready to perform, see if I'm recovering well. Um, I can track each week and see are my jump heights trending upwards, are they trending downwards, is my training working? Am I getting like lower and lower heights for like two weeks and then super compensating and getting a new high for like the third week and then repeating that over and over? It also helps me see where some of my strengths and weaknesses are. For example, in this first one, which is just knee bend, relies a lot on ankle dorsiflexion and knee extensor power or strength. Alright, so when I first did this, when I first got this equipment, Marcia could actually up jump me doing this first variation because she has a lot better dorsiflexion than I do and possibly had better relative ankle or relative knee extensor strength than I did at the time. Five, five, five. Uh, once we move on to the second variation though, when the hips get involved, then I jumped significantly higher than she did. Five, six, four. And then when we add the counter movement in, I jumped even higher. And on hers, she got higher with her hips and then didn't get any higher with the counter movement jump. So that tells us a lot about where our strengths and weaknesses are. Five, seven, four. Now we add the hip in. Sink this down. Six, nine. I usually start every week with this, get an idea of how well my training is progressing, how well my strengths and weaknesses are coming up. Sometimes I do it in the middle of the week too, just to keep testing. It's always good to keep testing stuff as much as you can. You always want an accurate log of what your training is doing. Make sure it's working correctly. Six two five. Six, five, four. And then we finish off with a counter movement jump. See how that compares to everything else. You notice I do single leg here. Usually, throughout my strength phases, all my jumping is sub maximal bounding and single leg jumps. And then when I move into like power and speed phases, I start doing max effort bounding and more bilateral jumping and depth jumps. But I always start out single leg during the strength phase. Eight three nine. Let's see if we can beat that. Eight eight four. Eight two three. Eight three nine. So on um, all these variations, my my left leg is actually the more powerful leg. Um, except for the first variation, my right leg is usually my jumping leg. Um, my left leg is more powerful on all those except for the first one. And like I said, the first one relies on ankle dorsiflexion a lot. And my right ankle has better dorsiflexion than my left ankle. So that is a limiting factor on my ability to do that first variation of these. And it shows in the results because it's the only one that my left leg is weaker on. I want off some squats now. I usually do everything barefoot, but on really heavy squat days, I don't I wear shoes because it's a little bit easier to get into my deepest range of motion. And if I'm squatting super heavy, I don't really want to have to focus too much on trying to have a good form. I want it to just come naturally. I'm going to do a couple warm ups. Thirty-five at two twenty-five now. 
295 and then we'll get to squatting. That's a 295. Super maximally centric, so one of my favorite things to do. I think it'll always be one of my favorite training methods. Uh, it's actually been a while since I lifted really heavy because uh, I've been focusing on other stuff. So not sure how hot this is going to be. So I'm going to go a little lighter than I'm actually supposed to because I'm not sure where my strength is at at the moment since it's been so long. So this is 405 with the releasers, and then once the weight releasers drop off, it's going to just be 305. So, we'll see how this goes today. It's been a very long time since I've been super, super heavy. Walking this thing out with these releasers swinging around it sucks. I hate it. I hate walking it out so much. It's so weird. Six seconds. I think I made like four and a half or five seconds, but it wasn't too bad. Now we're gonna turn straight around, and we are going to do one single leg drop jump hurdle. One of those with the band under the foot is to, to accentuate the e the eccentric part. Won't pull it a tiny bit. And then come back to this again. Whew. You'd usually be advised by people telling to do like one super max, one super maximal eccentric as the first rep. But in a decent phase, I would rather just overload it a lot, use a lower volume. I'm only gonna do like six to eight reps total. And each one, it's gonna be one rep, one drop jump, one rep, one drop jump, three or four times, take a rest, do it again. And then we're done with heavy lifting for the day. So let's try this again. <clears throat> single leg and sub-maximal. We're just trying to be nice and relaxed on these for the most part. Use a heavier band, I'm not getting the overload that I want. Alright, one more 
wrong side of that cluster. I think I'm gonna put two. I think I'm gonna do two more reps. Or two, yeah, two more reps on the cluster. I can feel myself wearing down on these, so I think I can get two more in. It's the first week back, so it's not a big deal. It's another thing if you're if you're lifting and you have a certain number of things you're supposed to do, but you start seeing the quality go down then there's no point in continuing to do it. Just You want quality reps all the time. Unless you're just trying to wear yourself completely out, which you probably don't want to do with a super maximal eccentric. Um, yeah, you always, for the most part, like strength and power stuff, you just want quality reps. So if the quality starts getting bad, it's time to move on. So I'm gonna do two more reps, then I can get that in, and then I'm gonna move on to the next stuff. Auxiliary lifts, supplementary lifts, accessory lifts, whatever you call them. Moving on to some super maximal pull ups. First, we're going to do a little bit of an overload on this pull up. We're going to use band assistance on the way up and then. Do an eccentric on the way down. And then we'll do a second set. Do a second set. So one arm. I can never get this stuff on me. I really hate setting things up and getting things prepared. At least for the part of lifting. Instead, or I would do 
a drop, drop dyno really. But I don't have it, so this is what I do instead. Stand up here, I drop, and I'll catch this thing and pull up. Do like three of those. If you got a dyno wall, it'd be way nicer though. Now I'm between sets. Gotta do some band pull aparts. And now, I'm gonna do some worms for our last set of pull ups. Haven't worked one else for a long time. Only, I probably had a few years of not training them. And I decided I should probably make one arms like a standard thing I can always do. I've never had the best like upper body pulling strength compared to the rest of my skills though. I'm a lot more of a leg person than an arm person. Like you have all the people that skip leg day every single week and just bench press all day. I'm like the opposite of that. If I could, I'd skip upper body every single day and just do legs. I really don't like doing upper body. I have to start all the way open here and roll myself in. Because when I hang on a bar, that's always where my body goes, it always opens all the way up, so. Might as well train every bit of what happens when I hang on the bar. Now this is a weird one-arm setup. Put my toes on the band so I can guide myself better instead of like swinging all over the place. It's weird looking. This is how I like to train them. Hopefully soon I'll move down to that black band. And then after I do that black band, I should be pretty close to just being able to rep these. It's been a pretty long time since I worked them a lot. So drop pull-ups. We'll be done with the main heavy stuff today. All the hard stuff's over. Other set of pull-aparts. Forward and backward now. Do some neck strength. You'd be surprised how many people can't hold their head up when they fall. They just flop all over the place. Another reason I do this is because I also train Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai. It helps me offset people pulling on the head and punching me in the face all the time. Helps keep my neck strong enough to handle it.
I know, like, a lot of the times when you see me do these accessory lifts, and even sometimes my, my main lifts are only like one or two sets every day, a lot of people think you gotta do like a ton and ton and ton of sets. You really don't have to. You can make like really good progress with lifts and, diff and different strength stuff, just doing like one or two sets sometimes a couple times a week, but sometimes you can even do one or two sets like once a week and you'll still make really good progress on stuff. I like to find the minimal amount of work that I can get progress from, and that's what I do. If I can, if I can see improvement week to week doing like one set of something, then I'm just going to do one set. There's, I'm not going to do five sets of something if I get the same results just doing it one time. At some point, you might have to do more. You might need more volume if it stops. Uh, if you start to plateau from it, you gotta change things up. Sometimes you got you need to put more work in, but for mo the most part, you don't really have to. Especially for most of you guys who are just getting started strength training. A lot of the parkour community doesn't do any strength training, so if you're just getting started, you really don't need a lot. You really don't need to spend like five hours in the gym every day unless you're trying to be a professional lifter. It's not really that much of a point. Spend more time training. And if you if you're wondering, since I forgot to mention it, that first pull up with the weight, the eccentric was 115 pounds. So, I had band assistance going up with 115 pounds, and then 115 pound eccentric coming down. So, we're here. Got 35 on my chest, 35 on my hands. I'm gonna go down, move that so I can come back up. Yeah, make it a little bit harder if I put this above my head. <sighs> I got that three more. Next or single leg Nordics or THRs. This is, I've been working on this for a couple months now. I'm pretty excited to achieve this soon. I've got it pretty good with using bands for assistance so far. I'm doing it pretty well there. So I've started to work with just body weight. The bottom half is pretty hard with just body without the band assistance. So I've got this stuff stacked in front of me. 
and I'm slowly taking the stack lower and lower every day until I can get all the way flat. Well, this helps me to not just have to collapse at the end until I can actually get all the way down. So, we'll see how it looks today. My hamstrings are actually pretty tired already today from all the stuff that I was doing, from training and stuff. But we'll see. I start with the bands, I can do it pretty perfect for like 10 reps. But when I start with the body weight, it wears it out so fast. Now, I take a second. This probably looks like it's not doing anything, but it's so difficult. And so painful. Ugh. Twenty second ISO. It's pretty horrible. It does not feel nice. Feels like your hamstrings ripping in half. So right now I do high temp body weight until it feels like it's too much, which is usually one or two reps. Well, when I'm tired, it's like one or two reps. When I'm not tired, I can do it quite a bit longer. I can get maybe four or five reps in. And then once that starts to fail, I'll switch over to the band. Do that until it feels like it's gonna fail. And then after that, I'll hold the ISO for a little bit. About 20 to 30 seconds. Depending on how much it feels like I'm gonna rip in half. Now with my left leg, I actually think my left leg's stronger. Even though my right leg's my jumping leg. I think my left looks stronger on these. Yeah, see, I get back up pretty good on this. tired today too. My right leg feels really tired today. Maybe from training yesterday or something. My left one doesn't feel very tired today. Could just be that every time I do this, my right leg's my jumping leg, so maybe it's just tired from training. And maybe the left one isn't. Who knows? Now we hold a nice on this side. Oh, get me out of here. 
Last thing today is some super maximal eccentric heel drops. So we're gonna go up on two legs, come down on one leg. You might be looking at the setup and thinking like, what's this weird stuff going on here? But like I said, two years ago, I fell and hurt the inside of my foot really bad. And it's very, it was very, very hard to strengthen it. And I had to come up with this weird way that hits that part of my foot from every position, like all three movements that cause it pain and stress it, it this setup gets it so that I go through all three of those movements at once. So my big toe extending, my foot everting and dorsiflexing, all three of those positions are the position that hurt it, which was really weird to train. So came up with putting these wedges here, so the front wedge extends my big toe, the side wedge everts my foot, and then in the heel drop I'm, do I'm dorsiflexing, so I'm stretching it through that place that hurt it, and then coming back out of it to strengthen it. So far it's been working pretty good. But just because I have this weird setup doesn't mean everyone needs to use it. You could just do a heel drop with just a regular, like a regular calf raise open one. That'd be like... That would be effective for most people. I just need something a little extra to protect me from that one bad injury I had. The other foot, even though this foot never got hurt, just make it equal anyway. Don't want to be training one side and not training the other side. One more set of that and we're done for the day. Probably won't film the last set though, I'll just end this video here.